Hello, welcome to the second lecture in Introduction to Economics 2 course. Uh, today lecture, we will see the determination of uh, national income. Of course, you can't uh, uh, find the more uh, subjects uh, or more uh, detailed explanation of the determination of national income in your uh, textbook. In here, we just see the, some uh, important parts of the chapter 2 in the textbook. In the chapter 2, we will learn about the factors that determine consumer expenditures and savings in an economy, the factors that determine investment expenditures, the role of the government expenditures in the analysis, the factors that determine net, ex net exports, net export is the difference between the export and import, and the derivation of the aggregate expenditure function. Why are expenditures important? Uh, because in the first chapter, uh, we see that the aggregate demand side for an economy is the important. Uh, and this is also uh, a approach of the Keynesian economics for the uh, Great Depression problem. So, because of that, we uh, need to understand the derivation of the aggregate expenditures for an economy because when there is a change in the expenditure side, there is an also change in the production side. So this production side or the change in this production side, of course, means that the economic growth. So we try to understand the determination of national income. Uh, and for that, uh, we need to understand the some uh, main components of the aggregate expenditures. The first one is the consumption, of course. The cons consumption function is the most important component of the modern macroeconomic theory. Because consumption also means that the production. Uh, and also, basically, we uh, assume that the, our uh, income is whether consumed or saved. So when, when we understand the consumption, uh, we can also say that the, something's about the savings or vice versa. Because we have, we have an income, we consume a, a part of the income or we save the part of the income. So this also affects the, uh, our determination of national income. In here, we can see that the relation between the consumption and gross domestic product. And also, of course, gross uh, consumption is determined by the income. So this uh, figure shows that the uh, powerful uh, relationship between the consumption and the income for an economy, for a Turkish economy. So in our textbook, we can see that the relationship between the consumption and income, so consumption function shows, shows that this relationship, so the difference between the income and consumption also means that the savings. Uh, so 
for example in here we can see that the sum uh, income levels and for this income levels we have uh, some consumption levels and also the difference between the consumption or between the income and consumption also shows that the savings and saving function shows that this relationship of course in here the most important uh, term is the marginal propensity consume or marginal propensity to save this uh, values shows that when if when there's a change in the income how much change uh, will be in consumption or savings marginal propensity to consume shows that the for example the uh, change in the consumption and the change in the income the marginal propensity to save shows that the change in saving and the change in income so so basically for example in here uh, our marginal propensity consume is the 70 percent so which means that the when there's a uh, change as a thousand in the income there is a change as 700 in consumption and also marginal propensity to save shows that the uh, for example in uh, again uh, a thousand change in the income uh, also the 300 change in consumption uh, sorry in savings and always uh, as I said when uh, we have income we can consume or we can save it so it's also the sum of the marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity must be equal to one the other one is the average propensity to consume and the average propensity to save so it shows that the consumption uh, income change or the savings or an income relationship uh, for a determinate level uh, income level in here for example we can see that the average propensity to consume rate for the each income level uh, and also we can see that the average propensity to save for an each income level so we can also see that the, for an each income level we have different average uh, propensity to consume rates and average propensity to saving rates which factors uh, has an effect on consumption expenditures our disposable income our wealth expectations about the future or about the future of the economy and demographic factors will an effect on the consumption expenditures or consumption decisions so when there is a positive effect on consumption our consumption curve shifts to do up or when there's a negative effect on the consumption expenditures are consumption lines shift to the down and also there is a change on the savings uh, function uh, shifts upward or shifts downwards the other uh, component of the expenditures is the investment expenditures we have a uh, horizontal lines shows that the investments uh, function because there is a uh, no relationship between income level and investment level which says that the other factors affect uh, investment expenditures which are in interest rate expected profit technological change cost of capital goods and capacity utilization so when there is a positive effect on investment 
our investment uh, function shifts to the upward when there is a negative effect on the investment or decrease in investment our investment function uh, shifts downwards and also other parts is the government expenditures for the aggregate expenditure function and again if when there is an increase in the government expenditures the curve shifts upward or when there is a decrease in government expenditures the curve shifts to downwards and the other one is the next export shows that the difference between the export and import in here there is a no relationship between the export and our or home, home country income level but our import is related to the, our income so because of that we need the marginal propensity income shows that the ratio change in import and the change in income so when there is a change in our income and there will be also change in the, our import so because of that we have a negative lay slope net export curve because of the import effect or the relationship between the income uh, and imports for an economy so when we get the sum of the each expenditures consumption investment government and net export we get the aggregate expenditure function so aggregate expenditure function show, shows that all the uh, determinants so when there is an increase for example one of the components of the aggregate expenditure our uh, AE function shifts the upward or when there is a decrease uh, one of the uh, components of the aggregate expenditure function uh, there is a shift to downward in the uh, aggregate expenditure function